in the name of the one God who created us, who redeems us, and who empowers us. Amen. I bring you greetings from all the seminarians and faculty of Virginia Theological Seminary, as well as your siblings in Christ in the Diocese of Minnesota, where I have been for the last two months. I'm on my way home to Virginia and speaking to you from Chicago, Illinois. Today, I want to talk to you about FOMO. FOMO. Fear of missing out. Our society right now is built on it. We're Facebooking and Instagramming and tweeting and Snapchatting and texting, all so that we know everything that's going on in everybody's lives as soon as it happens. Sometimes this can be a good thing. For example, we never would have known about the murder of George Floyd if it hadn't been caught on film and streamed to the devices of millions of people. During the last couple of years, social media has kept us all in touch. Birthdays, anniversaries, trips, weddings, all able to be shared even if we had to stay inside. But the research shows us another side to FOMO. The idea that you might be missing out on a good time is not new to our era. However, even though it's been around for centuries, it's only been formally studied during the past few decades since the advent of social media. We know from the studies that social media has accelerated FOMO in several ways. Social media provides a situation in which we are comparing our regular lives to the highlights of others' lives, skewing our sense of normal, and highlighting that our normal ain't so great. There are exceptions, but for the most part, people don't put dismal failures and hideous pimples, tragic haircuts, weight gain, missed deadlines at work on social media. Social media creates a platform for bragging. It's where people place the things, events, and happinesses and their best picture-perfect experiences, children growing up fabulously, vacations, promotions, which we validate by our likes, which leads a person to, if they don't have all those things, pay even more attention to those people who do. In trying to exhibit our most fabulous, bestest selves, quite often we leave out any sense of humility. And Jesus in today's gospel is basically telling us to watch what we're doing. The watching today is not only Jesus. There's a lot of watching going on in the readings today. In the gospel, Jesus was invited to eat at the house of the leader of the Pharisees, which we know can't end well. And the Pharisees were watching him closely, as Luke states. But little did they know that Jesus was watching them right back. In first century Palestine, it was the custom for the host to invite the most important muckety-mucks in the community, and then the muckety-mucks spent their energy seeing how close they could sit to the, to the host. This morning, Jesus watches and sees that the guests were vying to get the cool seats, and he gives comments to both the guests as well as the host and wins himself the title of the most awkward dinner guest ever. Jesus tells a parable of the banquet that seems to describe exactly what was happening that day. He tells them that it's wiser to sit in the lowest place and wait for the host's invitation to move up higher. He says, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is not just table manners and practical advice to avoid embarrassing moments. Let's look at this closer. Jesus is not saying that looking for a good seat or wanting to sit in premium seats is bad. He says that they should take the humblest seat because someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. Don't succumb to FOMO and try and get the seat closest to the action. Someone who has not yet arrived might be more appropriate to sit in the good seats. In other words, assume humility. To the host, Jesus tells him that one should not invite those who are cool and awesome and who are going to reciprocate with equally cool and awesome events. Indeed, one should specifically invite those who wouldn't have had a chance to come to the party in the first place and who will absolutely not have the chance to reciprocate. Luke does not mention how the guests and the host reacted to Jesus' socially charged comments, but it's not hard to imagine that they were taken aback. Can you imagine what they would post on Facebook? What would they tweet out? Hashtag judgy guest. Hashtag awkward night out. Hashtag miss manners. But here's the thing. It can be easy for us to judge the guests or the host of the dinner, the guests who are scrambling for the best seat or the host who invites the creme de la creme. It's easy to dismiss them as arrogant and pathological social climbers, those people. But the truth is, we're so incredibly like those guests and hosts. 
We see it in our own lives. Our society is based on pride and the desire to exalt oneself. It's the American way to be the best, the brightest, to have a good car, to live in a good neighborhood, to be number one in whatever field we're in, and post about all of it. We see it in our own churches. We like to brush shoulders with those we know and who are doing well. And just like in the time of Jesus, we do what is easy and automatically invite family and friends and respectable members of our community to our dinner parties and church functions and gatherings. We normally take selfies with friends or colleagues or the visiting bishop or famous guests and post them on social media. There's nothing wrong with this, but people do not normally take selfies with those laboring behind the scenes. You don't get pictures with the cater waiter or janitor or a homeless person. Nobody takes pictures with our church sexton and his wife who clean the church. And if they do get their picture taken, the photos are not usually posted on Facebook or Instagram. The big reveal is that Jesus didn't say we have to leave the table or give away our food. We're going to get dinner and we don't have to leave the party. Jesus is challenging us this morning to demonstrate a willingness to make space for others at our table. Others who wouldn't ordinarily get to sit there. In Hebrews, the second reading this morning, we're challenged to graciously show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Jesus' banquet table can never be a place reserved exclusively for us. Most times, people who have been marginalized by society find themselves standing on the outside of the banquet room, and the only way they can get inside is to serve those who are on the inside. People of color, LGBTQI2S+, the unhomed, people with addiction, immigrants, and many others have struggled for centuries to get a seat, any seat, at our table. And giving up our power to others can be intimidating. But again, Jesus is not saying that we don't get dinner, we don't get to go to the party. He's just telling us to review the guest list and be sure that everybody gets in. And not only that everybody gets a good place to sit, but gets a good seat, a paying seat, a private school seat, an Ivy League seat, a tech seat, a Fortune 500 seat. Jesus is telling us to assume humility. Because when we live in a spirit of humility, we don't need FOMO because we're focusing less on ourselves and much more on how to ensure that we make space for everyone. Not only those who are cool and the best and the brightest and the most fabulous or known to us. When we live in a spirit of humility, we extend an invitation to others expecting nothing in return. So how do we do this here in 2022? Well, one of the things that I saw in London and in Minneapolis is giving up the fear of missing out on the fabulous and concentrating on knocking down the walls between church and community and raising our proximity to others that are not like us, those who are not financially or socially secure, who are unhoused, who don't look like us. Increasing our proximity will decrease the fear. So dollars that we raise and wanting to reach out, consider investing them in the peninsula community so all can have a home and eat regularly. We are a community church. Remember the phrase, whatsoever you do for the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. So exclusion of our brothers and sisters around us in exchange for other projects that do not address basic survival issues is not inviting others to have a seat at our table. The banquet table provides a wonderful opportunity for all who are hungry to enjoy a meal, but this happens only if we expand our table and assume humility. Make it a priority in your own hiring as a community as well as personally. Make it a major part of the parish profile. And when you're praying for the success of the rector search every week, and we at VTS are also praying for the success of your rector search every week, Make that explicit in your prayers. In your day-to-day -day life, specifically hire those who are from groups who would not normally have a chance to work in your field. Reach out and get together with other churches to sponsor ways in which we can invite those who have social and economic challenges to actually join us. Not just give them some food in some sheltered dining room, but invite them to join us at our table. That is what we are called to do, to level the playing field. And truly, that's what our Episcopal tradition calls us to do. But the richness of our tradition will never be appreciated until we tear down the walls between our church and the community and walk our talk, helping those around us with their basic needs. Look around the church and around our lives, who's present and who's not. What Jesus is telling us to do can be really uncomfortable. 
We are willing to give money for someone or to take supplies to them, but we don't bring them to our church to worship with us and have coffee hour. We want to talk about land acknowledgments for First Nations people, but we don't bring them to our table and offer any kind of reparations or return of resources. We might be happy to provide lunch bags for the hungry, but we do nothing to bring them to worship and kneel next to them at the altar rail. We talk about loving our neighbors and don't even invite our neighbors down the street to coffee hour right outside the church. Jesus is challenging us today and asking us today, what would happen if we stopped trying to be fabulous and let FOMO go and instead exude a spirit of generosity that welcomes everyone to our table? Because those who are not here, the ones who are not in the room, are the ones who deserve the seats of honor at the banquet table. If we let trying to look good and fear of missing out and losing our place at the table take over, we ultimately end up in keeping the wall up between the church and the community, offering prayers to God about people who are less fortunate than us, when perhaps we should ask ourselves if we really want to partake in God's holy banquet. Because in reality, there are enough seats for everyone. You don't need a priority ticket or reserved seat. As we assume humility and smack down FOMO, our goal should not be focused on attaining the best anything. We already have everything we need. Instead, let's open our doors and find ways to invite everyone in. And in doing that, we may entertain angels right here on the peninsula community with not even knowing it. Angels. Now, that's a posting for Instagram. Amen. Please stand as you're able and join in reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. God, you breathed life into the world and called your creation good. You stretched out the rainbow as a sign of your blessing and protection, especially after times of trial. God of creation, hear us. We pray for ourselves, for all the times we forgot you are our neighbors. Forgive us for the times we have hurt others through our own deeds or through actions done on our behalf. Of mercy, forgive us. We pray that you send your blessing upon us. 
Save us from the ten tendency to think we can do everything on our own. Connect us to others who can guide, support, and protect us. And help us to do the same for others. God of joy, bless us. We pray for the strength to pursue your will for the world, even when we have to swim against the current. Give us courage to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. God of justice, send us. We pray that your spirit of healing and health wash over those who are impacted by illness. May it comfort the dying and all those who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially Barbara Turner and her family, for the death of her sister this past week. As the disciples shared a meal with the risen Christ, so by your Holy Spirit, bring us in faith to the table of the Lord. O fountain of love, love your, our friends and teach them to love you with all their hearts that they may think and speak and do only what is pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Remembering that God's peace knows no boundaries, may the peace of Christ be always with you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we have a few announcements today. Um, number one, uh, just as a reminder, next week is um, our annual retreat. Uh, there will be one service on Sunday here in the church at 10 o'clock. I will be rushing down from the ranch uh, to make sure that uh, you have someone here with you. Um, and Anna Maria will be serving uh, with everybody at, at the ranch um, on Sunday as well. So there will not be an 8 o'clock service next Sunday. We'll move it to the following Sunday for those who want to come at 8. Um, Ginny, you have some? Thank you all who've um, already, well, I think everyone's signed up now, but uh, quite a few of you have also offered to help with some of the different events that we'll be having over the weekend. I think I need one or two more um, people or peoples to help with the conviviums, the little happy hours that we have um, prior to dinner on both Saturday and Sunday. So if you're op open for that, uh, we'd greatly appreciate your help. And then the other thing that we're going to be doing is, this is kind of a joint outreach and um, 75th anniversary, we're doing making wearables, and I want to say that we have a per person who was able to make this just in the, during the time. Um, we're making, we're going to shoot for 75 different wearables, whether they be hats or these, these kind of scarves, um, uh, and this ties into our knitting basket. We're going to be giving them to the Chase the Chill Redwood City program, who in the month of November start to hang them out on different fences and, and chairs and such for people who are in need. So think about uh, doing that. We're gonna have one of, one of the events at the, at the ranch will be just sitting and, and crafting and making these kind of things. Thank you very much. Thank you. In Anna Marie.
Good morning. Um, so um, we have um, our godly play that is our Sunday school teachers are gathering after the service um, today just to check in with each other and um, finalize our plans. We are going to be regathering Sunday school. Um, we do a program um, of um, hearing the sacred stories of the church and the history of God with God's people called Godly Play. It's for um, kindergarten through, well, until they really don't want to come anymore and then they switch over to seekers. But our group right now runs from, or our group right now runs from kindergarten through about fourth or fifth grade. And um, it'll start on September 11th, the Sunday after Labor Day. And then um, coming up on the 18th, um, look for news in the parish email, but we are having a ministry fair and chili cook-off. Um, so that is coming up on September 18th. Thank you. I think that's all the things. And as for uh, our Bible study on Tuesday evenings, we've started reading the Gospel of Mark. And so if any of you are interested, let me know. I do have one book left to go along with what are our readings, and so if anybody's interested, see me after the service. We have birthdays today. Um, Dwight, I know the, your birthday. Anybody else? Oh, right. Um, Lisa's last week is this week, and so um, there, did the announcements go out in the email? Yeah, I didn't get it, so I guess I'm not um, a member. <laughs> So I wasn't quite sure, but um, it's, I'm sorry? <laughs> and I should pledge also, right? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I have to say that it's with sadness that, that Lisa will be leaving us. Uh, she has been an amazing office administrator and colleague. Um, we are continuing to look for um, a, a new administrator, although it will be hard to replace her. Um, in the announcement, there was, um, she wants it to be a quiet affair. Um, and so there are some uh, donations that she suggested that if you're interested in donating in honor of her and her service here, that would be lovely. Um, would you like to come up, Dwight? Any other birthdays? Let's pray the prayer for birthdays found on page 830. Page 830 in the prayer book. Let's pray prayer number 51. Watch over your child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls. And in his heart, may the peace which passes understanding abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day. Thank you. And we have an anniversary um, for Melissa and Jeff. So we wish them anniversary blessings. And let's pray together the prayer for our seminarian, for Laura. Together, or I guess I pray it. Bless all who set their hands and hearts to the work of educating people for the work of the church and seminaries. We pray for the students all who are deepening their preparation to lead your church faithfully and effectively. Bless our seminarian, Laura Natta, with grace, strength, and wisdom for the work to which you have called her. Amen. And Laura did mention about praying for a rector. Um, we have received a number of people interested in the search committee, and the vestry will be meeting to discuss um, gathering uh, the, those people together um, to officially start the search process. And we'll have a blessing here for all those who, who, who have wished to be a part of the, the committee. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and gift to God.
May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in communion with your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Us, 
Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you to come up to um, the steps uh, we will and um, receive the Eucharist. Um, we'll have two Eucharistic ministers with. Um, the wine, um, I will hand you a Eucharist. Please let me know if you would like gluten-free. And then um, take uh, the, the small cups and walk to the side and, and consume and leave your cups on the table. And we also invite all those who are watching to pray the prayer of spiritual communion. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the bread of heaven and the blood of Christ the cup of salvation the body of Christ the bread of heaven and the blood of Christ the cup of salvation Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are members of God and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now send us out to do the work you've given us to do and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May the wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and hearts in this world in the name of the Holy Trinity. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.